do. Always messing that up. Oh yeah, we gotta press that button there and then smash this one here and move this over here. <laughs> Uh, this is uh, a touch of an update. As I was goofing around with my stuff, I realized a thing. I, I was looking at different tables, and I came across one that, for what I do, I think is actually kind of cool. And of the other two tables, the Kraken and the Chimera, 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 whatever one, um, I found this table. And this table does a cool thing that actually might make you want to do it. I'm going to save this thing because I've just resized it. It didn't quite work, but... It is called uh, Updated Grid Table Remote. And this thing is actually pretty freaking sweet. Take a peek. It's got a nice black background. I didn't put in the holodeck yet. Uh, I'm just going to leave it like this. If you want the holodeck, that's your choice, not mine. Uh, but it's a, it's a pretty sweet looking table. It's, it's nice. Uh, I like this black thing down here. Or Sorry, not the black thing. The, uh, uh, the wood floor. Because if you drop stuff on the floor, why would that not go where it was supposed to go? Cards aren't moving. Let's say you drop this on the floor. It doesn't actually go all the way through the table, which is pretty cool. It just goes down and lands on the floor. I don't know if that's going to be helpful or not, but let's pick up the old character sheet. Drag it back over here. Um, you got your slots on the side, so there's room for quite a few, but you've got this little remote. So this is called the grid remote table. Raise lower surface, you've got apply custom image, you've got these side extender retractor kind of a deals. My table is set to, I don't even know where to begin to look it up, but it's set up so that if an object is not in motion, it just becomes like inert, it does not move. Uh, but with this table, with these extracting end pieces, you'll see how the table goes away. Now, it'd be cool if these things would all go with it, and then come back out. So, oops, I hit the space bar. Um, you know, that would be a neat feature, but once you get the table set up to look the way that you want it to go, I don't know. Uh, that's the only kind of crap part about this table. I'll get to the cool thing in a second. So you can set up the different buttons. I changed this table around quite a bit. I also sized this table so that it works with one world. Uh, these are the six buttons to open and close the different sides. If you start to click and close, you'll see this one stopped because I clicked too fast. You sort of have to let it get through its animation first. Uh, once that is said and done, uh, is that side fully opened up? Yeah, let's open up all of these things. You got enough spots for seven, seven people. Three down each side, one in the middle. I changed the hands to be different colors. Now, you could set this one to be black the game master and you're going to see that that's where it puts my little card i don't really much care if my card or my face or my nameplate is on the table the crappy part is is i don't know of a way to deal to myself so what i like to do is i like to set myself at purple not set myself but put purple on my side and then i leave it there and then i take black which is the game master and ask nobody else takes purple uh, what that allows me to do is I can then right click on my cards and I can go deal and the, see the, the, the black is deal to all. So black doesn't actually deal to black, it deals to everybody. So everybody gets a card. Uh, let's reset the deck, which is why I put purple because then I actually get a card instead of black. Now if I was, if I was to go to uh, set my hands to change this, oops, uh, whatever, I'll reset that later. If, I, if it was a different color, Willie, of course there goes my dog, freaking out, black game master. And every time, um, if I set him to game master and I go to here and I go to uh, deal to all, you will see that I do not get a card. So, eh, how do you win, right? I think that's the, the way to do it. Hands, right click, change me to purple, and go from there. Right click, let's reset the cards. Now the same thing applies to all of the other sides. You want to drop stuff over here, like you want to put a character sheet down there, and you want to close that side of the table up, it stays there. So that it's kind of, that's kind of lame, but whatever. The table is still kind of cool looking, and it has one other feature that I'm going to show you here. 
in half a second that I think is freaking fantastic. Um, smash the lock button. Let's go to my main table. This is my uh, my index card RPG main table. This is my system of choice. I think it's freaking fantastic uh, for, for game masters, but we're not here to talk about that. We are here to do a thing. Uh, that thing is this little button right here. Raise lower surface. This is ultimately cool, and it's going to solve some people's problems. It actually almost probably makes some people want to play on this table. Because if you smash this button, the centerpiece goes away. Why is this cool, you're thinking? Well, here's why. Let's say I want to crack out a map, and I don't want my players to see it. Let's say Slaver's Boat, for example. The table stays black. Nobody can see me rifling through stuff or looking for the table that I'm trying to get at. And then when it's go time, I just hit the lower table and it appears. And then I'll just smash the build button. This might get some errors. There is the pace bin for some reason is just being goofy and stupid. But voila, there it is. Now here's check this out. If I hit the uh, raise lower table, you can you saw it. You can kind of see it come up there. But that's the gist of it. It just brings it up over the bottom map. So if you clear that out, you can sit down here and be a touch stealthy with your things. You know, like say I don't want people to see the Alfheim map, but I'm like, oh, let's go over to the Norberg mission map. And then I'm like, okay, here we go, kind of a thing. Pop and boom and boom. Give it a half a second to load. And then here we go, because this map was partially uh, where the shipwrecked players come ashore. So how slick is that? That's actually very cool. I'm I'm quite impressed with that. Now you see if I hit the raise lower, that stays. There's one other feature I quickly want to show you. Let's clear the table out. Um, clear the table. We're in the middle of doing a thing, and I need uh, a grass mat. These images you're going to have to fart around with. The size of this tile, the image on this tile is 2024, uh, or sorry, 2048 by 2048. But the actual image itself is something like 2048 by 910. That's the green strip in the middle. So you, you make a 20 by 48 black square. You can just right click on this tile and go to custom. And you can just grab this image, open this image in GIMP, uh, and then just get rid of the green. Just paste your, I'll, I'll show you the one that I did here. I got. Uh, Here's some with some images on them. I don't think that's the one. There we go. So what this is, I, I did this one with gnome, gnome guard, uh, gnome and guard. Uh, just open this up a little bit. S sizing them doesn't matter, but what I did was I changed the gnome and guard map to be 2048 by 910, and then I dropped it in GIMP over top of this little green thing, and then I just saved it, exported the image, uploaded it to my my imager and there we go so let's say for example you need uh, let's say you got some parchment or something like that you can take this and you can drop this right on top of this this is the cool part about it now this isn't parchment but look what it did it pops this onto the table so let's say that you had green grass and one of you you know you don't have a green grass map boom there's your green grass you can then immediately go to your pencil uh, your pen and you can start to oh it doesn't oh, you can barely make it out I think we need to change the color to let's do a white there we go that'll make it a little bit better but pretty freaking fancy pretty freaking sweet pretty interesting not too shabby let's go uh, delete delete all the lines so yeah pretty interesting if you had a um, graph paper design graph paper or, or whatever right you could uh, draw the lines on it you can take this thing off bringing the table raise the table back up and then drop it back down gets rid of it all very easy to goof to goof around with uh, let me put the gnome garden or gnomen guard one on there uh, because i sized this properly uh, everything fits there's there's two different size calculations too like this map is 910 by 2048 the regular TTS maps, or sorry, the regular One World maps are 1600 by 945. So that's what these maps are on here. So it's a little bit of screwing around, 
But um, I think this would be sort of ultimately handy if you just had like a bunch of these things sort of just kicking around with different whatevers. Or even if you just wanted to put images on them because you don't want to, you know, create like a whole thing inside of one world. So you, you do a thing like, you know, uh, you drop this down here. This is just an image to give your players the idea of what they're looking at. So, you know, as you're describing the village or the town that they come in with the floating balloons, etc., etc., you can show them a, a picture and stuff like that. And then, you know, if you want to get into the, the 3D buildings, you use your one world for that. I think that's actually pretty slick, dude. I'm, I'm pretty impressed. Anyways, this one's going to be short and sweet. That's all there is to it. Um, grid. This is one called Updated Grid Table Remote. I think that's a cool feature. Um, I don't think I'll be switching to this table because I, I don't like the uh, that this stuff stays. But it's neither here. It's not like going to be putting them in or out. It would be cool if they if the, all the stuff disappeared with them. But hey, is what it is. How cool is that? That's freaking fantastic. Anyways, peace out.